What's going on everyone? Welcome to our latest little build, little fun time spectacular. So we've got ourselves here, a lovely little black manual VY ute. Uh, you can see it's already got an exhaust pipes, it's already got an OCR with a mathless kit or boot that was made up. Um, as far as I'm aware, I believe the engine otherwise is stock. Uh, and what we're going to be doing to this thing is one of our very common cam kits that we often do. We've picked uh, one of our my all-time favorite cams for a Cathedral Port LS to put on this thing. Uh, the customer has also supplied some 243 heads, which he has had ported, hand ported by a mate. So it's just a hand port. I don't believe there's any flow data or any flow uh, testing. Um, so, but you know, just a, a 243 on its own still flows much better than a 241. So as long as uh, the bloke who did the hand porting was pretty on the ball, we should be seeing some pretty awesome results out of this thing. So this video is proudly sponsored and brought to you by OSP Warehouse, on Song Performance Warehouse, which is our sister company, which is our online parts store. Now, if you go to our online parts store there at ospwarehouse.com, you will be able to find the entire cam kits which we supply and fit in these cars if you would like to do your own cam kit at home. Uh, and you know, if you like, you can buy a cam kit office, fit it yourself, and uh, hit us up and, and bring it out for a tune. Big thanks to OSP Warehouse for bringing this video to you guys. Not only do we sell cam kits, but obviously we have an array of parts to suit the LS platform, as well as just general performance parts like turbos, everything else. Head to ospwarehouse.com, have a look, and uh, you might be surprised at what you find in the prices that you see. So for this particular car, we are going to be doing a clutch as well. And for that reason, it's gonna be easier for us just to literally pull the whole engine out. Now, we do often do cam kits leaving the engine in the car. It can be done. One day we will make a video on that as well, exactly how we do that through that process. But for the fact that we have to do a clutch and flywheel on this engine as well, uh, by that point, it's literally easier just to pull the motor out of the car. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, and as well as the cam kit, this will also be getting a little bit of spice. Uh, and we are very, very excited about this little bit of spice. Not just the fact that it's a little bit of spice, which we, we love, we love our spice, but just the way that we've actually worked out how to control it, how we're gonna do everything with the spice uh, to make it very uh, automated and mostly maintenance free. So we'll get into that as we go, but first things first, we've got to get a baseline, see what this car is making at the moment, then we've got to cam it, see what it makes with our cam kit, and then we get to add the spice. So we'll get into that. First things first, what does a stock LS1 make with just an OTR and some pipes? Let's find out. So there you go guys, we've got around 322 horsepower, which in our experience for a pretty much stock LS1 with just did a few upgrades like an exhaust and that is pretty bang on. Um, quite a nice fuel curve, can't remember exactly who tuned this last time, I think he said it might have been WSM, but um, that's really nice, that's a really nice tune that one. So. We've got a few problems, oil leaks, a few bits and bobs that we need to look at.
guys. So these are the heads that will actually be going on the LS1 out of the black ute for this spicy setup. So these are actually a set of 243s for those who aren't familiar. 243s are actually the LS2 and LS6 heads. So compared to the 241s, they already from factory had a slightly better port and they did have a smaller combustion chamber, which made them a little bit higher compression. So these have been hand ported by one of the owner's friends. You got them hand ported before they came out. The port looks quite good. I'm not sure if these have been on the flow bench at all. They've got some numbers written on the combustion chambers. Not quite sure exactly what they mean. They don't seem to correlate with what I'm CCing here. Um, and if they are flow numbers, they are quite wild. They're, they're pretty pretty incredible if they are flow numbers. So I'm not actually sure what they are, what those numbers are, but either way, we're pretty excited about these heads. So um, his friend has done the port, but we're still gonna get these heads, uh, the, like the valve service done, and we're also gonna get them skimmed. Um, we probably should have had this underway quite a while ago. We probably should have had this underway before the motor even came out of the ute. That was our mistake. We should have been a bit more onto it, but there's just been that much stuff going on lately. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna be taking these down with me tomorrow. So we're just CCing them at the moment to decide just how much we wanna take off the heads, off the deck, um, to see just how much compression we really wanna get into this thing. And uh, we'll make a decision and get these heads sorted. So we've got the ute cammed. It's ready to go on the dyno now for a tune. Unfortunately, the owner, since we started doing this whole build project engine, um, has had an issue with his other daily. So he sort of needs the car back in a hurry. So we don't actually get to finish completely our real spicy upgrades for this thing. 
Um, once he needed the car back in a hurry, it sort of just became a instance of just getting it cammed, new clutch, everything back together and getting it tuned so that he could get the car back so that he has a car while he sorts out his other car. So once he's got his daily sorted out again, the car will be coming back and we'll be able to finish off the real spicy upgrades for this thing. So really looking forward to that. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to it just as it sits. Really, really big fan of this cam. We've got the Crow Cams 1250 in this thing, which is one of my favorite cams. Uh, nice long tube, four into one pacemakers with a two and a half inch exhaust, OTR, all of the berries, these hand ported 243s. We're excited to see how this thing's gonna go. So one thing is because of our spicy upgrades in future, this thing got some thousand CC injectors. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough stock of the US car injector plugs to just simply change over the injector plugs on the loom like we normally would like to. So we have actually used the adapters for the Bosch EV1 to the US car injector, injector plug. Uh, we generally don't like using these adapters just because it creates another point where something could potentially go wrong. We do much rather just change the plugs over on the loom and that way it eliminates any potential for a, another electrical connection to go wrong. But we'll worry about that when it comes back for its spicy upgrades. Worry about it then. For now, we don't have time to order them and wait for them to get here. So we don't normally like doing that. I'd just like to point that out, but it'll do for this thing for now, just so that the owner can have his car back so that he can have something to run around in. Well, it gets his other one sorted. So let's get this thing started up, crank it up, listen to this 1250 lump around, get this thing on the dyno. We're excited about this thing. ironic turn of events we have fuel pressure issues or fuel supply issues so one of the other upgrades we were meant to be doing to this vehicle was an entirely new fuel system surge tank in tank pump in a surge tank etc but because of the events that unfolded and the owner needing the car back ASAP we decided to leave the fuel system stock we whacked our new injectors in we thought we'd just tune it with the cam and get it going but hey we have fuel pressure issues anyway so we have a few spare modules that have been sort of pulled apart to get parts out of for other vehicles so Fuck, yeah they're all butchered now frankenstein modules so i couldn't i couldn't put a reg together out of what we had but yep. i managed to get that reg out yep. of the old module which yeah let it come apart and i'll tell you it's the dumbest setup <laughs> it's ridiculous but anyway i know how it comes apart now so anyway rex replaced the fuel pump in the module that was in there uh you can see the strainer that came off the old pump is completely covered in crap full of crud um but unfortunately even with the fresh pump in that module we are having the same issue uh so uh <coughs> definitely not a pump issue obviously an issue somewhere else we've blown the line out there doesn't appear to be any blockages in the line we've tried it without the cap on doesn't appear to be pressurizing the tank uh so about the last thing is it looks like maybe a filter although the filter does look to be quite new that's why we didn't go to the filter first thing is it looks brand new but hey you never know the amount of stuff that's on that strainer it could already be blocked full of crap you never really know with these things. So uh, the next thing is to try a filter because at this sort of power level, just aspirated 98, what it's doing, it really should not be running out of fuel. Uh, there's nothing, no reason for this thing to be uh, having fuel supply issues at this sort of power level. So aside from our fuel supply issues, you can see our before run in the red, uh, this thing is shooting at a pretty good trajectory. Uh, so it is looking like these heads in this cam are gonna work very well. So. Super excited to see what results we get out of this thing once we get it sorted, but unfortunately it's going to now be a tomorrow issue uh, to get this thing fixed and try and fix what's going to happen. Uh, anyway, we'll sort it out. We'll see what we can do. So worst case scenario, we still have all of the parts here to do the fuel system that we were going to do for this ute. So we could just go ahead and put that fuel system in the car and it would be fine. Righto oh, no, guys. So it's about um, just after lunch on the next day. I've been in and out all day. It's actually my partner's birthday. So um, I've been pretty much out all morning, but Rex has been smashing through this fuel system. So we do, he just went ahead and basically did the fuel system that we planned to do from the beginning. Uh, we already had all the parts here. It made the most sense. We've already got the tub liner out. We've already got the rear end all apart. Um, it's, you know, we may, it may as well just get done now. That way when it comes back later, it doesn't have to get done then. So, uh, and it's gonna fix our issue this time. We've also got a new filter to put in it anyway, just for good measure. But uh, so yeah, this is gonna be a new fuel system. So uh, braided, <coughs> braided hose, um, we've got our Aeroflow in surge pump surge tank. 
in pump surge tank. In, in, in surge pump. In, in surge pump surge tank. That's what I said. I had it right. <laughs> internal pump in tank pump. In tank surge pump tank. surge tank. Anyway. Why was that so fucking hard? <laughs> uh, we really like these because we really like the idea of having the pump internally in the surge. It keeps it quiet, it keeps it cool. Um, you know, external pumps, they get. They're just loud and annoying and it's unnecessary. Uh, we, we hate unnecessary noise. Um, so we've got that, we've got an adjustable fuel reg and that just basically returns all right here, right at the back of the tank and then it's still just out of the, um, out of the, the surge there is still just a, a deadhead set up back up to the front. Um, and there's a Raceworks 340 LPH pump in that surge, which would be plenty to do exactly what we want to do with this car. Um, and we don't have to really do much at all at this end, um, which we've already done injectors. So at least this way it's done. We know we're not gonna have any issues and it's also future-proof for what we want to do <laughs> later on anyway. So it, it adds a bit of time, which, um, which is a pain, but uh, it's better to have it right and healthy when it leaves. So even this little job on its own wasn't without adversity and bad luck. Um, Rex went to start doing this fuel system this morning and the nut cert gun snapped. So uh, Rex had to fix up the nut cert gun and engineer a solution to fix that. Uh, so that we could get, he could get this job finished. But um, anyway, worth it in the end. Right, oh guys, fuel system is all sorted. Yeehaw, it's looking awesome. So the wiring, what Rex did with the wiring is very similar to how we did the purple supercharged 383 VY we did. Um, so he's run the new power for this is the, better. well this, is, yeah, this is better he says. An even better one. So power comes from the battery no, for the new pump. No it doesn't, it comes from there. Oh, sorry, sorry I've already got it wrong. It comes from there. There's a new power wire, goes into this new fuse here, then comes out of that fuse to, this was a spare relay spot. So I stole one of our setups out of my silver WH, depinned it and pulled all of the terminals and all the wiring out. Yep. And put it into- Terminated it to this. There. So then extend, ran our brand new 14 gauge from there. It actually runs underneath in that channel through the cab, follows all the other wiring and goes out through the bulkhead and out, so. All factory. All factory stuff, that's the fuse. It was really lucky because um, like these are slightly different to the VY, but we're lucky all of the terminals are all the same. It's just the way they lock, just different. So I was able to just cut out with deep in it and use the wires. So it's all like factory, like it was made that way. Like it was born so there. So fuel, that's intake fuel. That's our new fuel pump. Yep. I think one of them's the new fuse. There's obviously no spares there, so I'll just put, there's four spare sp spots there. I'll just put that fuse in there. There you are. All nice and neat and hidden. I don't know if you noticed either, so. but I put the different module in the tank. Oh. I put the V6 module in. Yeah, so swapped out the factory module, which has the regulator in it for the V6 one because it's not internally regulated. So, because- the venturi tube yeah so it keeps yeah the pit i said the venturi right. tube yeah Perfect. so works as factory but we've got an external regulator now so that makes sense so now, um, now we know now if if chris is ever to bring the blue one back this is exactly what i do put a v6 module in it yeah and do literally this exact same exact thing setup. and that'll be the end of his problems and the surge and everything's all hidden under the floor tub liner goes back in happy days everyone's happy so uh we did swap that filter out and we emptied out the old filter and it does look like it was probably very much most of our problem um this is sort of some of the remnants of what you can see came out of it a lot of rust and water and crud um so it definitely wouldn't have been happening helping the situation at all but like we talked about we were already that far into the back of the ute we already had all the parts here to do the fuel system now it's done so uh unfortunately now it's half past three on a friday afternoon so We'll bust ass, we'll get it on the dyno. We'll see, you know, if, if it goes really well this afternoon, potentially could be still be ready tomorrow. The cold start seems to be all right, even with those new injectors. So um, we'll just see how we go this afternoon, but it is what it is. We can't dyno on the weekends because of the neighbors. Uh, it, it just is what it is, so. Right, oh guys, we're ready to go again. Uh, unfortunately, I've got to go mow the lawn. I've got some lawn to mow uh, while we have some actual nice weather. So it's going to be another one of those ones where I don't actually get to film the dyno runs. My apologies for that, guys. But I will surely tune in in the morning with the results and you will see the car back for some spicy upgrades in future in which I will ensure that I'm around to film the process of exactly what's going to happen when we do that. So uh, exciting stuff. 
But uh, from all projections from before, when this thing was leaning out, I reckon we're gonna be making some pretty healthy numbers with this thing, and pretty excited about it. It sounds awesome. Love this combo. It's gonna be sick. Righto guys, back this morning for a quick catch up. Unfortunately, like I said, no footage of the actual dyno runs, but the ute will be back, so never fret. There will be more footage of it to come. But it ended up going 421 at the wheels, which for a stock bottom LS1 is freaking awesome. That is a really good result. Again, just a really good combo. Uh, whoever the owners made is that did the hand port job on these heads, did a quite a good job uh, for us to be able to achieve that sort of number. So really, really awesome. Uh, Rex was saying there's quite a bit of like drivetrain vibration and stuff as well. It seems like there's probably a fair bit in the drivetrain that's not really that happy, which obviously if there's unhealthy stuff in the drivetrain, that does rob a little bit as well. Um, but the only stock bottom aspirated LS1 that we've done that made more power than this was uh, the white VZ ute, which we LS1 swapped um, and then did a cam package on that. And it actually had uh, some really, really good CNC ported 241s, 241s. Um, so that's freaking awesome for a, for a stock bottom 5.7. That's a really good result. Uh, you know, it's the sort of thing we'd normally see from CNC ported heads. So uh, really big fan of this combo, big fan of this cam. It's a really good example of keeping it simple, stupid, you know, stock intake uh, with just a, a VCM OTR, some nice pacemaker, four into ones and a two and a half inch exhaust and just the right cam and the right heads. And this thing is really just purr and it's, it's freaking awesome. So great result. We will see this ute back soon for some spicy upgrades. It's got the new fuel system and everything in it now, so all we need to do is add our spice, bit of a retune. Uh, we need to do a new controller and all sorts of, like, yeah, ECU to control the spice and everything else. So there's a fair bit to go on. Uh, obviously, just we couldn't do it this time because the owner really needed the car back. But we're excited to see this thing back here. Hope you guys are excited to see it in the channel when it comes back. Uh, it's a really, really cool setup. We're a big fan. So um, yeah, we're, we're really excited to see it back here. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're excited to see it as well. Uh, if you are looking for any LS parts or any performance parts for that matter, head to ospwarehouse.com. Head to our merch site, Busted Merch. We will see you on the next one. Peace out. See you. Bye.